Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Good morning, Coyotes, and welcome back to the studio. I'm your host for today, Madison Lamb, and I'm joined with... Dylan Silvera. And Alexis Candiani. Coming up for you today, we have a spotlight on a multifaceted job of a Long Beach lifeguard and had the opportunity to ask Coyotes on campus an important question. Get ready because Good Morning Cast Day starts right, right now. now. Good morning, my name is Alexis Candiani, one of your hosts for today's show. On April 15th through the 26th, CAST testing for 11th graders will be taking place in your English and Math classes. Your scores from the previous testing period will be compared to this year's testing period in order to measure your growth. Scores are printed on transcripts and can be used for college acceptances. In fact, if you do well on the CAST testing, UCs and CSUs can excuse you from placement tests and certain writing and math courses. Cal States and UCs also use the CASP score to determine placement in college, saving you money. CASP testing may seem unexciting, but to those who attend and complete the exam are entered into a raffle to win several items, including a 2024 HOKO ticket and a 2024-2025 ASB card. So make sure to show up and do your best on the CASP test from April 15th to the 26th. That's enough for me, now let's get back to our show. Thanks Alex for that information on CASP. Here on campus, we have people of many different heights, but how tall do they think they are? What's up, Coyotes? Today, we're gonna be measuring your guys' height with this, and to make sure you're not lying by your height. So let's go. Come here! <laughs> how tall are you? I'm 5'1". Can I check with the... Yes. Are you like 5'2 with the, the Uggs on? Oh, really? Yeah, I see him, come here. Gabe, how tall are you? 6'3". Can we check? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's 6'3". How tall are you? Six foot and a half. Can we fact check this? Yes. Bro is not that tall. I think that looks right. Let's go! Miss Song, how tall are you? 5'5". Five, five. Can I check? With heels. 5'3". 5'3", 5'3". How tall are you? I'm six feet. Can we check? Yeah, you can check. Yeah, you're like 5'10 or 5'11. Yeah, let's just round it up. It's like the same thing. <laughs> this is Mr. Welch. So weird. How tall are you? Six foot three. Can we check? Is this stand up straight or something? Can you even reach that high? Excuse me. I love your hat. Thank you. How tall are you? I'm 5'4. You're five foot eight with the Yoshi hat. Yoshi hat? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come here, come here. Come here. How tall are you? I'm like five ten and a half. Can I check? Okay. I think you're I actually think you're five eleven. Nice. How tall are you? Six two. Can we check? No. For the most part, everyone was not lying about their height, except for like two people. So good job guys. <laughs> so how tall are you guys? I can say for sure that I'm six feet. You sure? Well, did you know that 83% of people actually lie about their height? And it seems like a few of you did lie about your heights, but uh, maybe not 83%. There were still a few liars out there. I can't really say much because I probably would have been one of them. But regardless, before we move forward with the rest of our show, let's have Arjun discuss the most important announcements for this week. Arjun? Thanks, Dylan. I'm Arjun with your announcements for today. Powderfoot football is coming up soon. Junior and senior girls are eligible to sign up as players and boys varsity players can sign up to coach or referee. The game will be held on Friday, April 26th at 3.30 p.m. Please use the QR code on screen to complete the interest form. Seniors, be sure to upload any pictures and videos you have for our GMC senior video. Please scan this QR code on the following to complete the directions on the dock. The Castaic High School Junior and Senior Prom, Enchanted Evening, is taking place on April 13th at the Vineyards. Tickets are currently $170 with an ASB card and $180 without one. That's all the announcements I have for today. Now let's send it back to the host. Thank you, Ajahn. 
At the Student Television Network convention, students had eight hours to find the meaning of Jack of all trades. And in this case, Marine Safety Officer Devin Beebe explains that lifeguards really are the Jack of all aid. So I'm a Marine Safety Officer for the Long Beach Fire Department Marine Safety Division. Never wanted anything to do with the ocean. I, I, like, I did not like anything beach related. I was really afraid of stingrays, actually. I don't know if you're familiar. If you had told me when I was 17 years old that I would be here doing this, I would not believe you. Um, so yeah, once I got started, I just fell in love with the profession. I fell in love with interacting with the public and the excitement of the day-to-day -day of being a lifeguard. <laughs> it takes experience to finally, you know, you see something maybe time and time again, maybe it's your first time on a certain call, um, but just like gaining that confidence in yourself. It doesn't just, I feel like, at least for me, it didn't just come right away. I feel like people think, you know, when I tell someone I'm a lifeguard, they're like, oh, so you're sitting in the tower when it's raining? Um, no, so as a Marine Safety Officer, during the summer, I'm responsible for a section of beach that lifeguarded by our seasonal guards who are out in the towers. They're the ones who are kind of boots on the ground, making advisals, they're seeing the rescues, and I'm responding to them, if that makes sense. Let's get into the winter months. Um, like I said earlier, it's just me driving around solo in a truck. There's not as many people on the beach, but we still get incidents. We, get, we have a lot of boating traffic, we have, we respond to medical emergencies. So if you're having a medical issue on the beach or near the beach, that's something that we'll respond to. Our swift water rescue, our dive team, marine fire operations, and then we also have boating and so I have deck hand work. We have such a diverse, I guess, realm of things that we do from swift water rescue to boating to enforcement and ticket writing and marine fire operations and diving. It's such a unique set of, I guess, disciplines that we perform. And I think that that's a really unique aspect of this job that a lot of people may not understand or know. May of 2022, so about two years ago, I was working on Rescue Boat 2, which is our one of our rescue boats downtown and we received a call. It came out at just before 8 p.m. for a submersion off of the west end of the Belmont Pier. I remember jumping in and it's dark, right? So um, I just remember thinking like, okay, this is exactly like I've trained. Like we've, we train in night dives and I've trained in, you know, a single person primary search before. So we have extremely low visibility in Long Beach, so I could see maybe two or three feet. Um, and so I started my search and I found the person um, within minutes and brought him up. And I don't know the outcome, but I do know they transported the victim to the hospital. We do a lot of our own tower maintenance, so throughout the year these towers get pretty beat up. Um, so what I did just now is cover up some graffiti. The locks get messed with or anything like that. We'll make repairs to those, make sure the towers are secure. This is one of our beach units. So this truck is equipped with all the equipment we need to make a beach rescue or to respond to any sort of medical emergency. Um, so obviously we have our rescue buoy, which is kind of the bread and butter of lifeguarding. Um, in here, we have a rapid dive unit, which is if we were to have a submersion right off the beach, it's something you can get into and be ready to dive within a couple minutes. I think about two or three minutes. We have a marker buoy. We have fire extinguishers and there's some other various equipment. One piece of equipment that I think is really cool that I don't think many people know about is our Guardian face mask. So this face mask allows us to talk to the top side. So talk to people on the surface while we're at depth. So so 
So this is our swift water equipment. So we have a lot of gear. We do not travel light, as you can see. So for our swift water gear, we have a dry suit, which I could pretty much put it on over what I'm wearing now and be and enter the water and be completely dry. So if we're entering the LA or the San Gabriel water river, or even if we're just getting in the water off here during a storm, it protects us from all the, all the uh, bad stuff in the water. Um, we have our PFD, so a personal flotation device, um, some straps and just various equipment um, that we use in the swift water environment water fins, a helmet, and then these are the throw bags that I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, so this is, so you like coil the line and then you hold it by the strap here and you have to like throw it. So that is what I am not the best at. <laughs> so that's all, that's just a glimpse of some of the gear that we have. I really enjoyed the documentary made by your group for STN and it was really cool to see exactly what goes on in the daily life of a lifeguard. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing opportunity that I got to work on the documentary and being able to talk to Devin was a super insightful experience and I honestly learned a lot personally about like life lifeguarding as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we have for this week's edition of Good Morning Cast Day. Please follow us on our Instagram and TikTok at Good Morning Cast Day and our podcast Coyote Call, new on YouTube. See you next week. Bye! Bye.